Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, sometimes people ask me if I think we're living in the end times, to which my answer is, most definitely yes. Does that mean the second coming of Christ is imminent? I don't know that. But all that God has wished to reveal to humanity for our salvation has now been revealed with this public revelation concluding upon the death of the last apostle. This deposit of faith is now entrusted to Christ's holy church to preserve, unpack, and proclaim in every generation until that second coming of Christ takes place, whenever that will be. Come, Lord Jesus. So what of private revelation? But I, by that I mean those visions, dreams, and locutions claimed by many Christian souls over the centuries. In discerning the veracity of such claims, we have to use our human reason and ask some basic questions, such as, does the private revelation affirm church teaching? Does the life of the alleged seer display both sanity and sanctity? Are there any authenticated miracles or great spiritual works associated with the claimed supernatural event? Does the local bishop approve or at least not condemn such claims? Even then, no Catholic is bound in conscience to accept any alleged private revelation. And yet, the Church has shown special favor to various private revelations over the centuries. Just think of the visions of St. Catherine of Siena in the 14th century, or the Marian apparitions at Fatima in Portugal in the 20th century. Another widely accepted private revelation is that of Sister Faustina Kowalska, an early 20th century Polish nun who claimed repeated apparitions of Jesus, which has given rise to a popular contemporary devotion to Christ's divine mercy. One long-standing devotee of the divine mercy was Pope St. John Paul II. In the year 2000, he canonized Sister Faustina and officially designated the second Sunday of Easter as the Sunday of the Divine Mercy for the Universal Church. Providentially, Pope John Paul died upon the vigil of Divine Mercy Sunday five years later. At the heart of the devotion to the Divine Mercy is the Holy Eucharist. St. Faustina's full religious name was Sister Maria Faustina of the Most Blessed Sacrament. Meanwhile, almost every page of her diary references the Holy Eucharist. In one place, she writes, the most solemn moment of my life is the moment when I receive Holy Communion. And for every Holy Communion, I give thanks to the Most Holy Trinity. And so this week, on the road to Emmaus, I am challenging you to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet at least one day this week, ideally at 3 p.m. A link to the text of the prayer is provided. I want you to particularly focus, however, upon the prayer that reads thus. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. What difference can praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet make to your life? Watch this short but powerful film to find out. My name is Lisa Kudis. I am the Chief of Staff and the HR Director for the Diocese of Lansing. My dad, uh, Larry Ebenkamp, he was from a terribly broken family. He was sadly abandoned by um, his mother. His dad fought in World War II and um, continued to serve in the Army during the 1940s when my dad was growing up. Dad and I had a difficult relationship growing up. It's probably not unusual for most people to say that. His faith journey was very um, hot and cold. He had Alzheimer's. It really took a turn for the worse um, when COVID in 2020 kind of shut everything down. The disease progressed very quickly over the course of about three months. I was constantly praying for him, praying my rosary. He was sliding more and more into more often of more time of the day, I guess, um, asleep and then slipped really into unconsciousness the last couple of days. But that last day, I remember um, just feeling this intense compulsion, I guess, that I needed to pray more. And Divine Mercy was something that I learned about. It was kind of my own little private devotion. 
And as I'm there with my mom and my sister and I'm realizing this could really be the end um, with my dad, I this compulsion, I just looked at my mom and my sister and I said, "Can would it be okay if I prayed this Divine Mercy Chaplet? And we'd already had a priest, a good friend of mine, come in and anoint my dad probably a week before that. So I felt good about the anointing, but I just really felt like he needed more prayer as he was approaching um, the end. And, and I worried a lot about his not being, not having a close relationship with the Lord, his kind of hot and coldness with the church over the years. We were all, had our hands on him, on his arms, on his legs, his hands, and I, they didn't know the prayer, so I prayed it. Have mercy on us and on the, on the whole world. That repetition, I said, have mercy on dad and on the whole world. Have mercy on dad and on the whole world. Just repeated that over and over. And as we got to the end of the chaplet, my dad had two middle names. His name was Lawrence Joseph Ambrose. And I thought, wow, rock star saints, right? So I called upon those three saints for him as we completed the chaplet. And right as the chaplet ended, his breathing, everything, um, he was very calm through the whole prayer. He took a couple of deep breaths and then his breathing just slowed and stopped. And my mom and my sister kind of looked at me wide-eyed like, what just happened, you know? And I just kind of smiled and all of a sudden, you know, we're all crying, but I felt this peace and sort of this joy of that I did what I could do to try to bring him over that threshold. And I trust that Jesus was there with his divine mercy. When you embrace this divine mercy chaplet and the trust that you put in Jesus, and trust is something we give, and by giving our trust to him for whatever the issue is. I pray the divine mercy chaplet very regularly, especially when I'm dealing with issues at work that maybe seem like there isn't a solution or even personal issues where I'm, I'm like, I don't know, Lord, how to get through this. Um, I will turn it all over to the Divine Mercy Chaplet and Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. It takes the weight and the burden off of me on how to solve it and I hand it to him. And every time I surrender, everything works out. Um, sometimes there's still some difficulty to go through, but it, it, that, the power of that prayer brings things into the light and brings things into a way that um, are solvable, that there's a way forward. And I, I believe 100% that it's my prayer and turning that over to Jesus that helps open up a path forward to a solution.